All right. So hopefully people can hear me. I hope everybody's doing all right. Um, I am going to build my practice routine for the next month. And um, I thought uh, people have asked questions about my routines and stuff like that. I thought people might be interested in checking it out. So let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. But we're going to start with the routine itself. Um, uh, so I base all my root, the routines on the, the skills that I need to work on. So I have articulation, flexibility, low register, multiple tonguing and rotary and piccolo. And so, um, I'm good with articulation, flexibility. I'm good with everything except for rotary. Um, I haven't been doing that. And so, um, I'm planning on not continuing with rotary uh, just because my rotary trumpet is not in working condition right now. So instead of rotary, um, I think I'm going to write uh, etudes and then uh, we're gonna get rid of all uh, this, this, that, and that. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do for the etudes later. So, again, if anybody has any questions, let me know. If not, I'm just going to try to describe what I do for my various uh, things. So, the one-minute drill, I'm going to keep this at 120 because I still can't do it at 120. But I'm going to pick new Arbin exercises. So, um, I have the Arbin book here. And basically what I do for this is I just pick ones that look like they might be kind of fun to work on. Um, so previously I did this number 15, um, and that one was pretty fun. Um, but I'm going to choose, I did number 15, I did number 18, I did, um, number 29 and I did a different one. So articulation for me, the reason I put it into a program is because I want to work on um, improving my ability to articulate cleanly and consistently. And so it's more about, for me, trying to refine the feeling of breathing in and releasing the sound. And so I don't really care if it's super difficult. I don't really care if it's hard or whatever. I just want to find something that's going to allow me to do it. So um, let's do page 33 number 31 that's going to be one of the exercises so we'll go back to the routine and um so instead of page 21 we're going to do arbin page 33 number 31 and then uh, we just got to find a goal tempo for it so um For goal tempos, uh, I especially if it's an exercise that I have not really worked on in a while. Of course, I could play this thing like right now, general like pretty well, right? Like ninety percent of the way. And so, what I generally do is I just try to not worry so much about taking taking what I could do right now and doing it faster. I'm much more concerned with taking what I can do right now and doing it better with a higher degree of consistency. So I actually just pick a tempo that I think I can play right now. And um, I'll describe what the program does in a second. Um, but basically, uh, in one month from now, I'm going to, this is the tempo that I'm going to choose right now is the tempo that I'm going to work for one month from now. So we have, I just have my tonal, you know, the tonal energy tuner. And we, I just tap tempo. Bum, be dum, bum, 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 be dum, bum, 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 ba dum, bum, 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 be dum, bum, be dum, bum, 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 be dum, bum, bum, ba dum, bum, bum, do, 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 do. So we have about 84. And that's the first exercise. So we'll go back to, for you guys, we'll go back to the Arbin book. Um, let's do number 34, page 34, number 32. So we'll um, Arbin page thirty four number thirty two. Um, 
that's about 124. Um, can someone tell me if you can hear me? You should be able to hear me, but can someone make sure and let me know if you can actually hear me or not? Um, because I don't want to just be talking. The, it looks like it's picking up my trumpet mic on here, but I just want to make sure. Or it's picking up my vocal here. All right. Uh, so we got to pick five more. And then I'll explain why, like, I'll explain again why I picked the various exercises that I picked. So um, for you guys, yo, Alex, I'm glad you made it home. Um, all right. So. These are all six, eight. Let's do number page 36, number 38. Arvin, page 36, number 38. And that's. Bon, da dun, da dun, da ding, da dun, 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 uh, we'll work back up here. Oh, that's a good, this is a classic one. We'll do page 30, Arvin, page 30, number, oops, uh, number 25. About 1.14. And finally... Um, let's see. Oh, here's a classic one. Ar Arbin, page 25, number 11. All right, 150. All right, so I'll get you guys back on the routine so you can see what that looks like. All right, so you can see uh, up on the, um, I think you got, yeah, you can see. So it says one minute drill and then all these Arvin exercises. Now, the one minute drill is specifically designed, I put it in there to, um, to work on my single tongue speed. I'm just like committed to doing it long-ish term all right everybody with me and then the other arbin exercises are just ones that seem like they'd be kind of fun to play and i just want to like work on it right I'm, I'm not concerned i'm a big believer in my teaching i'm a big believer that it doesn't really matter what we play it matters how we play it so i'm not necessarily concerned with can i learn these exercises like of course i can play them i'm not really concerned with can i play them i'm concerned with can i gradually play them better and better and better and generally speaking i think when we're working on building skills they should be we should be trying to um play easier things things that are easier now when we're working on repertoire we're doing that for a different reason but when we're building skills like i said i think that the easier the exercise the better because it allows us to focus more on what we're trying to accomplish, which for me, when I'm working on articulation, is um, consistency of breath, consistency of like how it feels on my lips, and consistency of release. So all these exercises, all these tempos, I'm generally capable of playing right now pretty well. And so you can see then, so these, the first three exercises here are all the all the exercises I just did. You you can see that one the one minute drill is on day one, day three, and day five. And you can also see it says one to two times at 102, three to five times at 78, and two to four times at 90. Now I'm only gonna play the low end of all of these. It says three to five times. I'm only gonna play it three times because it'll take too long for me to do otherwise. But um, that is to take advantage of the of the the fat. So when it says one to two times, that's my sort of my quote fast tempo for the week. When it says three to five times, that's my slow tempo. When it says two to four, that's my medium tempo. I think practicing at multiple different tempo ranges within a given cycle has a lot of benefit. And so, 
um, the fast tempos are to test our abilities, to test my abilities at any given time. So I see each exercise up here, I'll see three times throughout the week at three different tempo ranges. So you basically have an A day and a B day. Exercise one, three, and five is your A day. Exercise two, four, and six is my B day. If anybody has any questions about that, let me know. Um, again, like these are not exercises I'm learning to, to learn. I'm using these exercises to improve the mechanism of execution of articulation, if that makes sense. So flexibility is going to be next. Um, I have not, I have not uploaded this book, um, to, um, whatever, but I'm going to use pretty much all I'm going to keep this slurring and double tonguing octaves and I'm just going to change the tempo to 10 higher be, uh, beats per minute and then I'm going the rest of them I'm going to use uh, Scott Belk's book uh, Scott Belk's book this one right here uh, I like this book a lot because they're kind of weird and they're kind of uh, hard to do and so um for those of you that have this book, you can open it up and follow along with me if you want, but I can't show you the exercises on uh, on stream. And so basically, I'm just going to look through and try to find some exercises that look interesting. And, um, uh, and be like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. So I did flexo potato po potamus. I did I slur in your general direction. All right, we're going to do this one, Parduba Double Flush. So, Belk, page nine. <laughs> Happy New Year, and no, these slurs do not make your butt look fat. Um, <laughs> Scott Belk is pretty <laughs> clever. So, we have, that's in 6-8, and it's... So we want one and two and three and dun So we're gonna go about sixty-eight beats per minute. Okay. Next next one's gonna be um uh belk. Page 14. That one is a. What's that? 110. Okay, let's flip around to the back of the book and see what's there. Um. Roses on a piano for my Valentine. So Belk, page eighty-five, and that one's in four-four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and so one thirty-two. All right, slurring double tonguing octaves. It's just me going. Bo hey Jake, how's it going, man? Um, as I, I don't know if you got the message. I'm sure Nick told you, but the. Ballet ended up getting canceled <laughs> or, or postponed, I guess it is. So um, I guess it's okay on many levels that you um, ended up not doing it. But uh, slurring double tonguey octaves is boy, so F sharp up to C. I do that three times and then I'll double tongue it. I'm going to keep that in there because I like working on that. I want to learn how to double tongue octaves like Alan Vizzuti does. Um, Well, we got to do pumping irony. This is page 81. Belk, page 81. So that's about 92. And finally, last but not least, Do, Re, Me, Myself, and I. No, that's no. Never mind. Um
Al Casanova. It's in six eight, but it looks like it should be in three four. So we'll go. We'll do it in. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. We'll go. Belk, page forty seven, number at one hundred and eighty beats per minute. Um, are the schools, I assume the schools you teach in Jake are being canceled too. All right. So this is all going to be the same. Uh, we're going to just, uh, bump up the tempo. Tonguing with weights. Yeah, we'll do 120. Snedecore, low etude, number 10. Let's not do number 10. Let's do, um... Uh, I, I've been, if anybody has any questions about what I'm doing, please feel free to ask. I'm just going to kind of keep charging ahead here, but, um, yeah, Scott Belk's book is, uh, the thing about a book like Scott Belk's is I norm if I didn't like program it into this thing, I just wouldn't play out of it. Cause they're like kind of hard and I would, I need the ability to, um, like sort of learn them. Right. And so ultimately that's the problem I found is I wouldn't have a chance to, um, learn. Hey Jeff, uh, we're doing our best work. We, we have enough food for like two weeks. So we're, we're super quarantined. Um, so when it says, uh, oh yeah, well, I, it's good that you still have the ability to teach it, teach, you know? Um, so on the, it says low A2 drills on the thing. That's this page. I find this page to be incredibly effective because it forces me every other day to play low Fs. This is something I would probably skip, be not because I don't care, but because I just like wouldn't think to do it, right? You just sort of get into the zone. Um, and we'll talk about this at the end uh, of the benefits of doing, doing that. So um, I know all these. I've worked on these for years and years and years. Um, so we're going to pick number three because it's one of my favorites. Snow, uh, snow decor, low A2 number. And then we're just going to do the tempo that he, um, suggests, which is 112. Multiple tonguing. Okay. So multiple tonguing is, um, another one that. A lot of people, uh, I, I think, will be this will be helpful for a lot of people to um, see me work through. So I choose three triple tonguing and three double tonguing exercises. All right. So um, I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to pick the exact same exercises, um, or I'm going to change one of them. But basically, I'm going to pick exactly the same exercises. So I'm going to show you what those are. So my first exercise is this one right here. And the reason I chose this one is because I want one, at least one exercise in my routine that allows me to work on tonguing faster. And so I think that these are the best exercises to do it with is because you're not really, the fingers aren't moving too fast. Coordination is not a limiting factor. And if, this is too much coordination, then back up, right? Play this page. This is where like the goals that you have make such a big difference is because you'll, what's up? Yeah. Um, sorry. So this is where it makes a really big difference because no, people would s possibly skip this exercise right here because it's so easy and work into ones that are difficult. But like I said, for me, speeding my tongue up, the ability to go faster is a, an important skill to me. And I want the easiest possible exercise so that I can actually do that. So for me, 
Um, this is not the easiest possible exercise, obviously, but this is well, this provides a little bit of difficulty while allowing me to focus on speeding up. So the goal of this is to speed up my double tongue or my triple tongue rather. And then I went all the way down here and I chose this one in C minor. Now, the reason I chose this one is because the arpeggios make it so I have to work on coordination. So the tempo is not as fast and I'm more concerned with coordinating, right? So I have one that works on absolute speed and then I have one that works on I'm trying to coordinate my fingers. There are two separate parts of multiple tonguing that are important, I think. And then the third one I chose, which I'm going to change, I chose this one and I just chose it because it looked hard, <laughs> you know? I, I didn't choose it for any other reason other than it looked like it would be really difficult to do. And I'm going to change that one to, yeah, okay. So what page did I just do? Page 169, number, what? No, page 170, number 63. Arben, page 170, number 63. And we're going to go... So that's about 92. So... The reason for this exercise, it's right here. The reason for this exercise is it's kind of a, it's not a combination of both. It's just a really difficult version of something I struggle with. So I'm going to work on this one for a month and then I'll move on from there. And then the same exact thing with double tonguing. All right. So uh, if everybody is with me, we're going to go back to the routine and, um, so I'm going to keep, I, again, this is the one that I just changed. But because I'm concerned with the skill and not the exercise, all I'm going to do is just increase the tempo by four for all of these things. Or by, yeah, by four clicks for all of these things. Um, and then down here. Yo, Patrick, how you doing, man? Uh, and so... This is going to be an interesting experiment here to see four clicks is like one click per week, right? And so if you hypothetically were able to do this for a year, I would be able to multiple tongue things 52 clicks faster than when I started. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm really interested in that idea. Um, so over here is Piccolo. Uh, let me come over here a little bit. Over here is the piccolo. So warm up, all that means for me is I just do this warm up. I learned from Barbara Butler. I've done it on streams before many times. Um, I just, this is in there just to make sure that I play the piccolo because it's many times in my career, I have gone months and months between playing pickle times of playing piccolo, right? I just pick it up when I have to play the Messiah and then I got I pick it up again at Easter when I have to and then maybe I have a random show with the orchestra that I have to do it. But this is for me to make sure that my chops stay good on the piccolo or stay somewhat fresh on the piccolo. So usually I'll warm up and then I'll play a movement of a piece or a, an excerpt or something like that just to make sure it all works out. All right. The last thing we're going to do here is etudes. So, um, all right, hang on just a second. All right, so what I'm about to show you is brand new to me. Um, it's not something I've ever messed with at all. Um, and it is designed around learning etudes uh, efficiently. So 
we first need to pick the etudes we are going to learn. So let's pick a Longinati. Longinati is a classic one. I did Longinati number four, I remember. If anybody has a favorite Longinati that they recommend for me to learn, let me know. Number nine is good. Number 10. I think I learned number 11 at one point. And there's 12. Um, Let's see. So for me, this is just, what do I want to work on? What do I want to know? What do I want to, it's, all right, let's do number 10. So why is it showing number nine? Okay, so the reason we play etudes is so we can take the musical th the things that we're working on the skills and apply them to music, right? We all know that. And so the musical thing I'd be working on here is actually musicianship, right? This is sort of like, uh, it says Takata, but it's sort of like a fantasy, you know, really uh, deep sort of uh, um, very dramatic. Ba -ba -dong, dee -dee -yo. Beep, beep, boom, 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 dee. Right? So we're, we're choosing this because we want to work on making this sound as easy as possible. So the first thing we need to do is we need to split it up into sections. So, ba -bum, bum, 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 Beep, beep, ba, 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 beep, beep, boom, 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 boom. So we could do that, but we're not going to stop there. Ba, ba, beep, beep, ba, 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 ba. We're going to go to, so measures one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Measures one through nine. So. A2 number one is going to be Lon Genati 10. And then section one is going to be measures one through nine. And we're going at 104 for the eighth note because that's what they chose. All right, next section. Uh, we'll go pick up to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So pick up to 10 through measure 14. It's a small section, but that's all right. Pick up to measure 10 th through 14, same tempo. Okay. And then we'll go pick up to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Tw uh, we'll do pick up to 15 to the end. Pick up to measure 15 to the end. All right. And then we'll delete that, 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 that. All right. So we need another etude. So um, another etude book that I've really wanted to work out of is the Beach book. So we're going to dive into the Beach book next. If anybody has a favorite Biche etude that they really like, um, let me know. 
we're going to not pick the easiest ones or the most common ones. but rather ones that are maybe number 12. Maybe a lyric one, you know? How about this one? How about Beach number 17? So we go back to the routine and we'll go Beach 17, all right. So then, um, okay, so be a do 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 one measure one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um so measures one through ten and then the tempo that's marked is 80 okay Hang on just a second. So, John Allen, I see you just joined. Um, I have this very, very. If you're if you're still watching, uh, I have this very distinct memory of sitting at that Chinese restaurant that's near OCU with you. Like I don't know, this would have had to have been like five years ago, and I was talking about efficient practice and trying to be better about making sure I'm maximizing my time and stuff. And you said to me. Um, you know, we didn't like, it just, I think you said something along the lines of, we just like practice. We didn't like worry about that. And I just became obsessed with it. Uh, if this is of any interest to you, this is actually in many ways, like a realization of that conversation, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to me, but, um, anyway, uh, 11, tw let's see. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 11 through 22. Measure 11 through 22. We're going to go at 80 again. Okay. Hmm, where did I just stop? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 23 to, through 27. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Okay, so twenty-eight through the end. And both of these sections will be at eighty. All right. So for you guys to be able to see this, now we have the second etude filled out here. You can see right here it's filled out. And it's starting to take shape. The last one, uh, not not to be boring, but we'll pick a Charlier for our final one. All right, who's got a favorite Charlier? La Embouchure. Oh, maybe this one will be fun. Yep, number 34. 
Sorry, the this thing is off a little bit here. Let me open it up. There you go. All right. So 34. So the first section is going to be. What is 76? All right, we're going to go at 70 for most of this stuff. So, beginning to tempo one. Measure one to tempo one at 70. Tempo one to, um, what do you guys think? The Allegro? Yeah, the Allegro. It's a very talkative crowd today. That's going to be at 70. Okay. So the Allegro says 112, but most likely that's going to be ins insane. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Let's go at a hundred. We're we're gonna seventy six. Seventy six is the tempo. What's up, Andy? Sorry I didn't uh, respond to your text. I was doing this. So we're going to go Allegro to the end. It's a big section. 96. All right, then delete, 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 delete. You're going to delete all these supplemental exercises. That's for if this is the only routine you're doing. All right, so... This is, oh, and then we got to write Charlie A34. So this routine uh, is very, uh, it's like experimental for me, but it is essentially makes it so I can organize and learn the sections of these pieces. And so what I'll do is I haven't worked this in here. I might just do, let's see if I can do this. Insert one below. Yeah, so run and uh, V3. Why is there an error? Oh. Almost, almost everybody. Run and V3. Do I need to do that? Other. Oh, maybe I, no, I don't. There we go. Fixed it. V4. V5. Copy that. Copy. Okay, we want to insert one below. Actually, we want to delete this. Delete the. This is going to be on the next week. this you do resize fit to data and boom everything works okay and then I'll fix that later okay so what we have now is
Okay, what we have now is um, how I'm going to learn these etudes over the next month. Now, usually when I was in school, I was going to learn these etudes over the course of a week, right? And the problem is, is like, it's not enough time for me, you know? I don't know, maybe other people can learn this stuff quickly, but I would just, I would just learn these etudes and I wouldn't really learn them. I, won't, I, I wouldn't get the value out of it, right? And so ultimately the problem with that is like I would use them for sight reading or I would use them to be like, okay, I can still kind of play the trumpet. Everything is still kind of working. And that's like neat, but that's not necessarily beneficial for like trying to get to the next level. And I, I don't know. There, I don't know if there are more people out there that are like that, or maybe it was just me. But like I said, I, I would just learn these etudes because I was told to. And then I would never go deep into the Charlie A book. And a lot of it, again, is just has to do with planning. Like it's, you just start practicing and you go, this is really hard. And so, yeah, I mean, it looks weird to me. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this here. We're going to put this here. 80. 80. So this is how I would make it so it's, so you can see it's a little bit more spread out. Pick up 15 to the end. We put that there, take it out of there. Um, and then we got to get measures, measure one through nine. 104. Cool. So now we have, it's, it's more or less spread out. We have four to six s sections each day and so this program and this program will line up with each other this is a six-day program and so it, we would just say like for etudes we'd say c etude program right and then C etude program. Okay, and then so down here you have, so we have everything all lined up. At day one, program start, what's, what's Monday? 3, 16. All right, so now week of, you know, week one is 3, 16. We can change that. You can always format that to week of oh look how cool it looks now so day one week one i i don't have to do it in this order but this is everything that I'll, I'll do that day one minute drill one to one time at 102 arbin page 34 number 32 two times at 93 arbin page 30 number 25 three times at 74 and then Scott Belk, page nine. So the, when it's like this on Scott Belk stuff, uh, all that is is a tempo thing. I won't necessarily do the whole exercise three or five or something times. I'll just use this to vary the tempo with it. Um, and like I said, for a book like that, it makes it so I actually can learn the exercises versus just either failing because it's too fast or feeling like I'll never get the benefit, the flexibility benefit because I'm not able to play it fast enough to challenge myself. Uh, low A2 drills and Clark five, you know, this is one time. This will always be one time. This will always be one time. This thing just makes it so the tempo varies. And so it's a little bit more difficult. Um, these will be one to two, depending on, the, it's just basically depending on the length of the exercise. And then A2 program, it's like CA2 program. So I come over here, you know, um, the program start is going to be 316. All right, and so over here I'll have the pickup of measure. I should probably do this. <laughs> How's it going, Scott? <laughs> um, yeah, I was just describing that 
uh, a book like the one you wrote, as opposed to something like the Arbin, uh, it's not as accessible right out of the gate. Right. So like you either have to play it slowly to learn the exercise, but then you feel like sometimes you're not challenging yourself in terms of, uh, your maximum capacity of flexibility. But if you go fast enough to challenge yourself in terms of flexibility, then you don't really like learn the etude and the ins and outs of how you, or the, the exercise, you don't really learn the ins and the outs of how to do it. And so with this program, um, the program makes it so I start slowly, but I know eventually I'll get fast enough. I'll basically get both things and it's all programmed out. Uh, and then I think like once you've done it, then it's just really, it's actually interesting and fun to play out of that book versus uh, well, it can be a frustrating experience. I think, um, if you don't really have a plan, um, but that's just my take on it. All right. So now I know what all this stuff is. <laughs> uh, resize fit to data. Boosh. Look how, look how awesome this is. Everybody's, and everybody is. So on the Longinati, I play pickup to a measure 15 to the end. You know, the Biche, I play those sections. And the Charlier, I play that section at these tempos. And then I go back over here and I have my warm up. So for me, this is, this is like how I, so I have the next month of my practice planned out. And then I also have, I'm working on this, variations on a Tyrolean song. This is sort of just pretty, um, this is like pretty peripheral for me to work on this. I have these various tempos over here. This is the tempos I'd like to be able to play it. These are the tempos I'm currently working towards. And these are Sergei Nakaryakov's tempos. And we're just gonna, in the background, work on this piece of music for the next like year or two and see if I can get it so I can play these tempos quite fast. But as of right now, I'm in week six, and it's the same kind of thing. This is a bit dated um, in terms of the rep repetitions that I usually choose. Anyway, um, this is my routine. This is so I have through the th these three routines, um, I have the next month of my practice completely laid out. I don't have to make any decisions about anything. Now, the value in that for me comes in thinking less means that I can think thinking less about like how many reps and what to do means that I get to think more about what I'm doing. Right. And so I get to think about the music that I'm trying to execute or the way that I'm trying to produce sound, depending on what the various exercises are. Absolutely. Scott, I'm glad you stopped by. Um, uh, and then it's progressive, right? So this is, uh, it's interesting. I don't know if you're, if you're piecing out Scott, but I had a conversation with Michael Anderson and he, he told me, he asked you about your book and that about these tempo issues that we were talking about. And he said that your response was the progressive aspect is not necessarily the difficulty of the exercises, but more so in the tempo things that you choose. And I, I'm in complete agreement with this actually, that, um, we should treat many things progressively. So this week right here, the fast tempos are 85%. This, so these are my goal BPM, right? This is my goal tempo. The, the one rep, all of that stuff is 85%. Two reps is 75 and three reps is 65. And then this week is 90, 80, 70. 95, 85, 75, and then 100, 90, 80. So it basically progressively makes it so over the course of the month, I'll get to my goal tempo. And then this is repeatable. And so the two benefits that come, I'm going to write a blog post about this, but the two benefits that come from repeating are one, you get the chance to start over slowly. And so as you get closer to the goal tempo, the things that you tried to do to ingrain things properly, if there's anything that you didn't ingrain properly, you get the chance to start over and say, okay, I didn't really blow through this enough, or I didn't connect, you know, I didn't like articulate right, or I, you know, whatever it is, you'd have the chance to sort of start over and address things on a month to month basis, right? And having this, so having, having the one minute drill one to two times, one time per week at this tempo, means that you're you're looking week to week for progress rather than day to day. Day to day progress is basically impossible unless you're a complete beginner. And so 
this is where a lot of frustration I've found can set in is you're looking day to day, but like just human error can make it so that one day you feel awesome and the next day you feel horrible. But that doesn't necessarily mean we are we're getting better or worse on a day to day basis. It's just like maybe some things need a little bit of time to become ingrained. And so for me, planning that out to this degree allows me to a progress week to week, b start the process over, and then c I get to 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 have like I get to see the the minimal progress, right? So minimal progress over a long period of time makes for maximal gains, but also maximum retention because you're not progressing past the point where your body can handle it. Right. And there's a lot of this stuff comes from like working out and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about this, but the thing I will say as well is that I, uh, if anybody wants this kind of thing, um, I haven't quite made it public yet, but this is something that I can do. You know, if you're someone who wants more structure in your practice and you're finding it, finding it difficult to do it, like I can, we can talk about getting one of these for you it's basically the price of a lesson, so it's not like it's outrageous or anything like that. And I just want to make sure people know that's available. I know we have this coronavirus thing, and um, we're hunkered down. I'm sure everybody else has got their toilet paper, and they're hunkered down. And so if anybody's looking for I – mean, I did not do it for this reason, but I do want to make sure people know that it's available. Um, I just thought I would talk about how I choose because I know some people have asked questions about how to choose various exercises. And – um, for me, it's all based on your goals. So my goals are to continue to increase consistency, to continue to in- improve the the execution and the mechanism through which I play, if that makes sense. And so um, I'm at a different level than other people, and there are people that are at a different level than me. And so um, if I were in undergrad, this would look very different. It, first of all, it probably wouldn't have as much stuff on this if I were an undergrad and it might have more things like right here like uh if I go up to multiple tonguing at the top you know instead of exercises like this it might say work on k tonguing with zero so zero just means it becomes a placeholder right so there's no tempo associated with warming up on the piccolo it's just a placeholder so on this day when I get here I know I got to work on the piccolo and so if working on K-tonguing is something you'd want, you would just write work on K-tongue and you would have the exercises you do and maybe you could assign a tempo or maybe you wouldn't assign a tempo. Um, but it, 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 the thing I like about this as, as it is right now uh, is that it's, it can be completely customizable. So um, yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, Scott nailed it on the head. It, 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 it's like I spent 40, I spent 54 minutes partially because I'm talking about it, but let's say, let's say it takes me 45 minutes on a Sunday to sit down and do this. Like that's a significant investment of time just planning things out. But then if you think about how much, uh, structure and, uh, organization, I suppose that I have throughout the rest of the month, it's a small price to pay. And so whether you're structuring it to this degree with templates that I have, or you're just writing down on a piece of paper, I want to work on this for 15 minutes a day, whatever, you know, do articulation 15 minutes. And then you just choose what articulation exercises that you want to do. The more time you spend at the front end of it, the more streamlined everything else is on the back end of it. And that's the part that matters, right? Because making a plan, there's a couple reasons it's beneficial. The first and most obvious is exactly what Scott said. It's like it takes angst out of practicing because you've already decided that this is what you need. And so you're forced to sit down and say, what do I need? Okay, I need to work on multiple tongue. I need to make sure I touch the piccolo. I need to make sure I get my Clark studies in or whatever, right? And then when you look at it on the piece of paper, you know that it's you've already decided you need this. But another benefit of it is, again, that you can continually adjust based on where you're at. So maybe you get better at certain multiple tonguing things and you want to choose different exercises, or whatever, like you can do that, obviously. And this also, finally, for me, the best benefit of it, it it, it gives me the ability to see how I can progress. So instead of feeling like it's day to day and I'm barely hanging on to doing it, it, I can make a plan and say, all right, I'm gonna invest in learning this thing. I'm gonna take a couple of steps back and I'm gonna invest. And then by the time one month from now, I'm gonna be a better player than I was 
today. And gosh, do, that's just something that now that I've been practicing like this, I just can't imagine giving that up. I can't imagine giving up the feeling of the, the, the excitement I have that I, that I might or will be better in one month from now. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to send me a message or, or whatever. I love talking about this kind of stuff, but um, this is something I hope to be able to do for people if they're interested. So um, I'm trying to make sure if there's anything else that I can say about this. Um, I'll probably upload this to YouTube as well, um, just because it it more or less covers what's going on. Um, for building a routine, let's see. Longinale Beach. Like I said, this etude, this, this uh, routine is somewhat experimental. The reason why we're not going to run things in the, in the first week, but we would start running them here, is in the first week. Um, ah, thanks, John. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Um, basically, I think it's a waste of our time to run things when we first start learning it because we're just only going to ingrain bad habits. And so you might as well dig in. You know, some of these tempos are at 85%, right? Like we have this is going to be at 85%. Like that might be too fast for me to do in the first week. That's why we have one repetition is so that I don't spend all of my time playing it at a tempo that's too fast and ingrain bad habits. It's for me to see, okay, this is what it feels like. Then when I'm playing my slow repetitions, I have like exact information that I can infuse into my slow repetition. So the, over the course of the month, it gets better. I think often I've felt on the trumpet that I have to figure it out as soon as possible so, and then just coast from there. But there's not much investment in your learning in that. It's I'm going to take the skills that I know or the tools that I have right now and the skills that I have right now and get it as good as I can right now. And I think that this something like this allows you to say, I'm going to like learn about my learning. So um, that is what I've experienced. I've been practicing loosely like this for the better part of a year. But with this exact thing, I've been practicing probably since um, like November or so with these programs. Uh, my YouTube channel has a ton of these practice sessions, like full practice sessions using this thing. So you can hear every single note, every single mistake, every single victory. Uh, you can hear it all on my YouTube channel. So if you're curious of what it looks like, uh, I talk my way through a lot of the exercises that I do and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, but like I said, this is pretty intense, but because I'm obsessed with it. So if somebody wants this kind of thing, but they don't want to go through the the hours of trying to figure it out, just let me know um, and we'll figure something out. So I hope that ever that helps people. Um, as an aside, I bought a capture card and I'm going to, I think, I'm pretty sure my wife is okay with this. I'm going to start streaming actual video games because I love playing video games and I think I can work my schedule so I can get a couple of free hours to do that. And um, I think what I want to do is do play video games, but still show up and talk about the trumpets, the, you know, trumpet progression, our love of music, just to create a community. I've been doing it with the actual trumpet. I just think it's such a, a weird and different idea that it, um, some people have really appreciated it, but I can do that. I can do what I do on those live streams in, in other ways. So I think I'm just going to do the normal thing and once a week, maybe stream some video games. So if there's anybody who's interested in that, that might happen this upcoming week playing kingdom hearts too. If uh, you're listening and you enjoy that game. So Ben, I appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been, you know, as someone who's become more busy with content creation and being a dad and wanting to take on just learning more, you know, music and stuff like that. This has been invaluable for me. So, um, anyway, like I said, I'll upload this to YouTube. It should be archived on my Facebook and, uh, feel free to share it around. If you know of people that might, uh, and benefit from just sort of hearing somebody talk about how they structure things. Um, and, uh, we can go from there. So,
thank you all so much for watching. And um, I hope you stay safe with this coronavirus thing. Um, it's kind of crazy. All sorts of conflicting information. But we here in Alabama have had, like, I think we had our first reported case. But I think that's because Alabama is very far behind. And we probably have a lot more cases than what's been reported. So we might be in for a storm here pretty soon. So um, fortunately, a lot of this stuff I can do sitting in my room and sitting in my house and still be able to um, do this stuff for people. And, and so I can still stay connected. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll catch you on the flip side. Feel free to send me a message if you have any questions.